What's going on, guys? This is John Collins from the Atlanta Hawks. You listen to the Three Point Conversion Radio. Kevin Chenard. Hi, Travis. How do you see uh, your off-season acquisitions, most notably Gorgie Jang and DeLon Wright, fitting in? Well, you know, one of the big things that's been, um, you know, I don't know what's the right way to say this. One of the things that's uh, we've been trying to address a lot of different ways over the last few years has been a backup point guard. Um, and then, you know, that it's something we really wanted to focus in on this year. And we feel very good about the line. Obviously, he, you know, it's, it's six foot five. He's got the size to be able to play on and off the ball. Um, you know, he, he's got a very high basketball IQ, a uh, good defensive player, you know, has one of the knocks on him coming into the league was, you know, his shooting, but he's turned into a very reliable three point shooter. So we're excited to add him. Um, and then Gorgie, you know, with O being out, you know, the first, you know, three or four months, um, you know, we wanted to go out and get a get a solid backup. Um, and, you know, he brings a little bit of the stuff that Dwayne used to bring to us. You know, Gorgie's turned himself into a reliable, especially from the corners, three-point shooter. Uh, he's a, a very good passer. Um, so, you know, we're excited to bring him in as well. Bob Rathbun. Hey, Travis, is there anyone else other than uh, Hunter that's not a full go at the start? Yeah, we have a few other guys that we're going to kind of bring along slowly. Uh, obviously, O is not going to be a full go. Um, and, you know, hopefully he'll be ready at the end of December, uh, 1st of January, coming off his soldier, soldier surgery. Ew, easy for me to say. Um, you know, Kevin had a procedure on his ankle, um, cleaned out uh, after the season. Um, he's kind of on the same track as DeAndre. Uh, he'll be participating in camp, but not a full go, um, but we're going to build him up. Hopefully at the start of the season, he'll be full go. Um, and then also uh, Bogey is in the same boat. Uh, he obviously, as you guys all know, was dealing with the tendon stuff in his knee. Um, he had some um, PRP injections or stem cell injections in it over the summer. Um, so, you know, he's been playing one-on-one -on -one with those guys. And so we'll bring him along slowly at the start of the camp. And again, the expectations that he'll be a hundred percent go at the start of the start of the season. Back and then Clint, Clint, I guess, oh, I, yeah, yeah. And Clint, I forgot about, uh, you know, Clint had the PRP injection in his Achilles, the same procedure Cam had done. Um, and again, we'll, we'll bring him along slowly uh, with the hope of having him built up, ready to go at the start of the season. Back to Chris. Where do things stand in, uh, for the team in terms of vaccination rate? Uh, we are going to be 100% vaccinated again this year. Uh, we have uh, one player who's going to receive his second shot next year, or next year, next week. Um, so before the regular season starts, we'll be fully vaccinated, and obviously the whole staff's vaccinated. Zach Klein. Hey, Trev, uh, if I talk to you in three and a half weeks from now, right before the opener, what's the one thing you'll say, yeah, I'm glad we accomplished this during preseason camp? Uh, got and stayed healthy. Raphael Haynes. That's it. Oh, go ahead, Zach. Oh, okay. Raphael. Well, let's assume, uh, let's real quick, let's follow up. Let's assume you stay healthy. Uh, what is it, I guess, in terms of on the court you want to see um, the advance over the next couple of weeks? Yeah, um, you know, we've got obviously a couple of new guys that are going to be playing pretty big roles on our team with DeLon um, and Gorgie. Um, so, you know, getting those guys acclimated with our group. Um, and then, you know, I'm excited about our young guys. You know, we, we feel good about the two young guys we have and being able to see those guys, um, you know, play, play NBA minutes is going to be exciting over the, you know, these four preseason games we have. Raphael Haynes. Hey, Travis, Raphael Haynes with the three-point conversion. I do apologize if this has been asked already, but when you look at the team and how it's been constructed over the last four to five years, then you, um, you all make the Eastern Conference Finals. Is this season make the finals or it's a disappointing season? Uh, no, <laughs> no, certainly not. Um, listen, I, it, it's really hard to get to the NBA Finals. Um, you know, obviously only two teams get there every year. 
uh, you know, for us this year, as far as expectations, and, and I think I said this, um, you know, in the summer, at least to a few of you, you know, going into this season, we obviously want to be very competitive and build off last year. Um, but I, I think you're, you're living in a bit of a fantasy world if you, you're going to be in the Eastern Conference Finals or Finals every year, even if you are a very good team. Um, so for us, you know, our, our goal is to be back into the playoffs, hopefully have home court advantage, you know, this time around the playoffs. And once we get there, whether or not we have home court or not, uh, go, go, ahead, go out there and make some noise uh, like we did last year. So, you know, for us, is we're still a young team. Obviously, we, you know, sprinkled in some veterans the last couple of years and we feel good about our team. But, you know, you, you have to get some breaks in the playoffs. You know, we last year, you know, as I've said before, you know, we got Philly with Joel on the league and that 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 was helpful. Um, you know, in 2015, when I was still in Golden State, the first time we won it, you know, I think we played, you know, the first three rounds teams were missing players and you know people said we got lucky but uh, that's fine we won a championship getting lucky and you need to get lucky Emmanuel Glaze hey Travis how's it been this year um being able to work with Nate in the offseason last year you had him he was assistant he took over in the middle of the season but now after the playoffs and and having an offseason and a draft how's it been with you guys the chemistry uh, working together this offseason going into this season uh, good. You know, Nate, I mean, you guys have the opportunity to talk to him every day. You know, he, he's, he's a completely level-headed man. Um, you know, he, he's, a, he's a good person, um, straightforward, honest, much like myself. So, you know, we have, we have a very good rapport. You know, when we sit down and have talks about the team or talks about players, um, I would say the vast majority of the time, you know, our opinions are the same. So, you know, we see the game kind of similarly. Similarly, we want to have, you know, build this franchise, you know, the same way. So it's, we really haven't had very many hiccups at all, um, you know, when all our dialogues back and forth, so. Back to Chris. Uh, just to clarify something on Onyeka, is the goal now for him to be cleared by the end of December instead of the end of January? That's his own personal goal. Um, you know, he, he, he's, he's, he's marked the, the end of December on, on his personal calendar. Um, and then he's been, he's been back here for the past two months working his tail off and things are going great. Um, but you know, we're, we're still, we're still going to shoot to have him back in that January range. And if he gets back, comes back early, great. Um, but that, that's what he's marked on his calendar. And I also wanted to ask, what do you see as the next step for Trey's development? I think, you know, what we saw from Trey last year, as far as, you know, what, doing less, but to have more team success, you know, trusting his teammates more. I think just building off that is really continuing the right trend, you know, continuing to be a little more vocal on the floor, you know, as a point guard, getting people in the right places, um, you know, continuing to realize when somebody's got it going and, you know, the guy hits two or three shots in a row coming down and saying, okay, intentionally, we're going to run another play for that guy because he's hit three in a row, you know, just little things like that, just con controlling the game offensively. And then, you know, continuing defensively to, to give effort. Um, you know, those, those are the big things. And, you know, they're all completely doable. And I have a lot of confidence that he's going to continue to get better at those things. Paul Newberry. Following up on that, Travis, how concerned are you that uh, Trey might take up professional wrestling? And what would, uh, what was your, uh, what was your view of his uh, appearance there, uh, return to Madison Square Garden? <laughs> Well, the, the professional wrestlings there, they, uh, they know how to sell tickets and rile a crowd up and they did a great job there. <laughs> can, I, can I ask you one follow to that though? It's all seriousness. This, Trey seems to kind of uh, obviously relish that, you know, centerpiece and being the guy that people cheer or boo. Uh, how important to have a guy kind of like that, that sort of em embraces that and, and, seems to even thrive on it yeah no listen it's it's a testament to him you know it's something he's been dealing with this whole career um you know he he as you said he he wants that moment um you know he thrives in that and to to have the mental makeup to be able to go out there and you know not 
shrink in that moment, but to actually embrace it, it it's really important. It gives, obviously it gives him a ton of confidence, but it gives our teammates confidence, his teammates confidence to be in that situation. So, um, you know, we're obviously, we're obviously excited about it. And, you know, we, we hope that, you know, for the forthcoming future that we're in situations, big games on the road or at home uh, to have a player, you know, that's not going to shrink in that moment. It, it gives you a level of comfort. Okay. Uh, there are currently no hands raised. Um, if you have a question for, uh, let's go to Deshaun Tate. Uh, good morning, Travis. Uh, if anything at all, what is different for you uh, approaching this season at this uh, approaching the season at this part of the year uh, that may be different from around this time during the seasons prior? Um, I don't know if there's a whole lot different about how we we approach things. Um, you know, last year was a, a, you know obviously different because of the whole COVID situation. And, um, you know, we still have a little bit of that this year. We're, we're waiting on the league to give us all our final protocols for the season um, and what all that's going to look like. So I, I guess that makes it a little different than some of the years, um, you know, as far as as we've talked about, you know, we made the transition last year from being more of a development team to, you know, more of a com competing phase for the franchise. And so that that's the same as last year. Um, but, uh, you know, other than, you know, things that are out of our control, like, you know, what the protocol is going to be like, I, I think it's pretty similar to last year. Back to Kevin Chenard. You mentioned before, you know, the, the injury status of the players and hopefully to have them ready at the beginning of the regular season. If they are all healthy, do you worry at all about maybe having too many healthy players? Like, uh, not too many healthy players, but but too deep of a team? Like, uh, you know, too many players who are sort of rotation worthy? Is that ever an issue? Well, not for my job. It might be for coach's job. Uh, <laughs> no, um, listen, I think what you saw – and, you know, this is one of the things we focus on, too, with with our guys is last year, you know, guys gave up their personal stats for team success. You know, obviously, most notably Trey and John, um, you know, all, all our guys, they want to win here. They want to get to the top of the mountain. And I think what they saw last year, what they learned last year is that, you know, we do have a deep team and we have on any given night, a bunch of guys can step up and go out and get 20 points, 25 points. And, you know, our guys relish that when guys were on the bench, they're up cheering for their teammates. Um, so I think our guys have that team first, um, you know, we mentality. Um, and when you have that sort of chemistry, um, you, you don't run into those issues. Um, where you have guys upset about, you know, maybe not getting the minutes they want or the shots they want. Um, you know, we have, we have veteran guys that understand that, you know, there's younger guys that are earlier in their career and they accept those roles like Gallo did last year coming into this situation, you know, going from a starter to a bench role. So uh, it, it's a special thing, but when, when guys buy into that, uh, it really makes the season fun. Terrence Moore. Hi, Travis. Hello, sir. Given what you guys did last year, I'm sure that the average Hawks fan is going to expect you guys to do at least as well or somewhere in the vicinity. I mean, rightfully or wrongfully, I know the Eastern Conference has gotten a lot tougher than it was last year. Is that something that is a, a positive for you guys to have the fan expectations to be where it is right now? Or is that, I hate to use the term negative, but I mean, is that, would that be a drawback that you're going to have all these great expectations this year? And, and then, as you say, you, know, you want to make noise, but I think the average fan probably would be thinking bigger than that. No, well, first of all, the fact that the fans are excited is a positive, right? We want, we want the fan base to be excited about that. And unfortunately, in this business, there's only two, two to outcomes really at the end of the day, right? You either exceed expectations or you underachieve. Um, so that's the reality. And there are going to be some years when we underachieve, and there are going to be some years when we overachieve. Uh, we hope that we overachieve more than we underachieve. Um, but, you know, those are the two outcomes of the season. But 
what we saw last year from the community, the city of Atlanta, um, and the support we got from them, especially the second half of the season as we started letting more fans in and just really the buzz around town, that's it's our job as an organization to keep that going, to keep the interest, um, to keep people talking about us, to keep people excited about us. Um, and, you know, hopefully that we'll be able to do that, um, whether or not we get to the Eastern Conference Finals or the second round. Um, hopefully we can keep that sort of excitement in, in the community. Raphael. Travis, when you look at the team now, the not necessarily the namesake, but just the way the team is built, the type of players you have, was this the vision when you first came in and you know took over as the GM for the Hawks? Uh, yeah, I mean, listen, you guys have heard me say this from my opening day press conference to now. You know, we we want to play an exciting brand of basketball. We want to have high character individuals. We want to have you know four. And in, in a perfect world, five guys out on the floor that all, all can dribble, pass, and shoot. You know, I've said a few times too, it, it, the ideal team would be to have a bunch of six foot nine guys out there, right? You know, versatility. Um, you know, clearly we're not going to have that with a six one point guard who's going to be on the floor. But, um, you know, you look at the, you know, Jalen, who we drafted this year, you know, six foot nine with perimeter skills. Um, you know, he's shown a lot of flashes out here in the pickup games. Obviously, he was very good in the summer league. You know, the more guys that we can continue to add like that, um, that, that that's kind of, in a nutshell, my vision. You know, the versatility to be able to have guys out there that can switch, that all can play inside or outside. Um, that's when you become really difficult to guard in the NBA when you have multiple guys that can go out there and create for themselves or create for others. Do we have any final questions for Travis this morning? Okay. Thank you for your time, Travis. And yeah, thank you, thank everybody. you guys for showing up. And for those of you that actually combed your hair before you came on the Zoom, I appreciate that. <laughs> you know who I'm talking about out there, Kevin, Chris. <laughs> 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 Woo. All right. See y'all soon. See ya.